In this video, we're going to learn how object assignment works in C++ by default, including something that we're going to want to be careful about as well. So the first thing we'll do is define a simple type of object. Then we'll try to create a couple instances of this object, and we'll try to assign one to the other so we can see what happens. So we'll actually call our class simple, and our simple objects are going to have a single public member variable that's going to be an int called x. Now we'll try to create some simple objects. So we'll say simple, simple a, and we'll set simple a's x member variable to four. We'll also make a simple object called simple b, and we'll set simple b's x member variable to zero. So what happens now if we assign simple a to simple b? Like this, simple b is equal to simple a. Will they have the same x member variable value? Let's try to see. We'll say c out simple a dot x and we'll output simple a dot x followed by an inline. And then we'll do the same thing with simple b. We'll say simple b dot x colon output simple b dot x followed by an inline. So if we save and run our program, we're going to find that simple a dot x is four and simple b dot x is also four. So what's going on here is that when we assign one object to another object, the member variables of this object here on the left hand side are going to take on the values of the member variables in this object here on the right hand side. And that's how object assignment works by default in C++, is that the member variables of the one object are assigned the values of the member variables in the other object. Now, one thing we should make clear is that simple A and simple B are still two distinct objects. It's not like by doing this, we've somehow made simple B the same object as simple A, or somehow made simple B refer to the same object as simple A. There's still two separate objects. So for example, if here I said simple b dot x is equal to 20, and then we output the x values of simple a and simple b again, if we save and run this, we're going to find that simple a still has an x value of 4, and simple b has an x value of 20. And that's because these are still two different objects in memory. When we did this assignment here, simple b's x member variable was assigned the value of simple a's x member variable. And that's what's going to happen. So we have this sort of a view in memory where simple a had x set to 4, simple b had x set to 0. And when we did that assignment, x was changed to 4. Then later, when we assigned 20 to x, we had this view but we still had two distinct objects in memory. They're in a place in memory called the stack. Where we're gonna to have to be a little bit more cautious is when we talk about an area of memory called the heap. But let's go over something else first. How does this work if our object has member variables that are also objects? Let's define a new type of object called stack. And stack objects are going to have simple objects as member variables. So let's say public, simple, simple. And our stack objects have simple objects as member variables. So let's look at what happens with stack objects when we create a couple of those and perform an assignment. So we'll get rid of this. And now we'll say stack, stack A. And we'll assign the value for to the member variable x of the simple object that is itself a member variable of stack a. Then we'll make a stack object called stack b, and we'll do a similar thing. We'll say stack b dot simple dot x is equal to zero. Now we'll try to assign stack a to stack b. So we'll say stack b is equal to stack a. So in this case here, the simple object is a member variable of stack A and stack B. So how is this going to work? Let's see what happens. We'll output 
stack a dot simple dot x. So I'll put the value here, followed by an end line. And then we'll do the same thing with stack b. So stack b dot simple dot x and stack b dot simple dot x. And if we save and run this, we're going to find that we get four and four. And what's going on here is very similar to the last example. When we assign stack A to stack B, the values of the member variables of stack A are being assigned to the member variables of stack B. In this case though, the member variable is an object and we know how object assignment works. The member variables of this simple object in stack A, in this case X, their values are going to be assigned to the member variables of the simple object in stack B. So X is going to go from being zero to four, just like it was before. Again, let's try to modify stack B's simple objects X value now. So we'll say stack B dot simple dot X is equal to 20. And then we'll try to output these values again. So we'll copy and paste this. We'll save it. We'll run it. And again, as before, we're going to find that stack A's simple objects X value is four, but stack B's simple objects X value is 20. Again, what's going on is that we have two distinct stack objects, each with two distinct simple objects in memory. So it looks like this. On the stack, which is a type of memory, we have two objects, stack A and stack B. And both of these objects have simple objects as member variables. So the simple objects are also two distinct objects on the stack. And we perform an assignment from stack A to stack B, we're going to get that X is going to be four because the assignment takes place between this simple object and this simple object. And when that occurs, this simple objects, member variable X is going to have its value four assigned to this simple objects, member variable X. And when we later assign 20 to this simple objects, member variable X, that's not going to affect this object here. So now I said there was one thing about object assignment that we would need to be cautious about. And that's when we have objects that have member variables that are pointers to things that are on the heap. So let's go over an example of that. We'll define a new class called heap. And our heap objects are going to have a public member variable that's going to be a pointer to a simple object. So what this simple stores is a memory address for a simple object that's been dynamically allocated on the heap. And in the constructor for our heap objects, we're going to actually create this simple object by saying simple is equal to new simple and then simple x is equal to set x. So let's see what happens when we create some heap objects and perform an assignment with those. So in our main function now, we'll get rid of this and now we'll say heap heap a four and heap heap b zero. So this will create two heap objects, heap A and heap B. And when we create these objects, we know the constructor is going to go out and allocate space for a simple object on the heap. That's what this new does. New simple is going to go out and allocate space for a new simple object on the heap. And then we're going to assign four to the X member variable of that simple object in the case of heap A and zero 
to the X member variable of that simple object in the case of heap B. So now let's try to assign heap A to heap B. We'll say heap B is equal to heap A. And then again, let's see what happens to the value of X. We'll say here heap A dot simple X and we'll output heap A dot simple X followed by an line. And then we'll do the same thing with heap B. We'll say heap B and heap B. And if we save and run this, we get again, X is four and X is four. So everything seems to be working okay. But what if we did this now? What if we said heap B dot simple and we'll change its X value to 20. And then again now, let's output these X values the same as we just did before to see what happens now. So we'll save and run this. And now look at this. We're now getting 20 and 20. So what's going on here? So what's going on here is that our heap object has a pointer to a simple object. The member variable simple stores a memory address of a simple object. And here when we say simple is equal to new simple, what simple here is storing is the memory address of that newly created simple object. Now here when we said heap A is equal to heap B, it seemed to work just as before. When we ran it, we got heap A simple X4 and heap B simple X4. So it seemed to work just as before, but sort of under the hood, behind the scenes, things were working out differently. Because what was going on this time is when heap A was assigned to heap B, heap A's simple member variable has a memory address as a value. And the value of that simple member variables memory address is now being stored in heap B's simple member variable. In other words, both heap A and heap B are now storing the same memory address. We could say that they're pointing to the same simple object. So here, because they're now pointing to the same object, when we print out the value of X, we get four in both cases. But now here, when we change that value of X to 20, this simple member variable here of heap B is referring to the same simple object that heap A's simple member variable is referring to. We use the term pointing. They're both pointing to the same object. So here, when we go to output the values of X, we're going to get the same value because we've modified the same simple object. Let's see what this looks like in memory. So now we have two objects on the stack, heap A and heap B. The stack is the portion of memory for non-dynamically allocated things. And both of these are on the stack. And they both have these simple member variables that store a memory address. And we dynamically allocate space for simple objects on the heap. So we have now simple and simple. And these are two simple objects that are both distinct objects on the heap. And they're both created by the constructor of heap A and heap B when those objects are created. And sure, initially, this simple object has X set to four, and this simple object has X set to zero. Then when heap A gets assigned to heap B, this simple member variable here is gonna be given the value of this simple member variable here. But the value of this simple member variable is the memory address for this simple object on the heap. So when the assignment takes place, what's actually gonna happen 
is this. That simple member variable of heap B now stores the same memory address of that simple member variable of heap A. And it's pointing to the same object in memory. So when we printed out the X value, we got X4 for both heap A and heap B. But when we changed the X member variables value of the simple object that heap B is pointing to, to 20, we were then changing both heap A and heap B's simple objects X value because they're both referring to the same simple object. And this object here would actually be considered a memory leak because nothing is pointing to it and we have no way of freeing this space up. So that's why we need to be careful with objects assignment in C++ if our objects have pointers to things that have been dynamically allocated on the heap. They could end up pointing to the same things on the heap and we might not want that. What happens here is what's called a shallow copy of the objects. You might see that term used. So this is how object assignment works by default in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.